Now, of course, if a buffalo happened to smell those cubs, they would try trample them. So you'll probably find the cubs will stay probably really close to where we are if the lionesses do decide to have a full go at the buffalo. A comment from Jamie, who is saying, watching the lions, she's watching them down this fire break all the way from camp. Okay, here we go. While Peter battles the gremlin. Look, she's just changed her body stature. Um, Cubs, you're going to get into trouble, little guys. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> it's a tough job being a lioness with three rambunctious little cubs. <laughs> Because hunting becomes that much more difficult when you've got three little ones that haven't quite grasped the basics of it. We've just got two of them here having an absolutely wonderful game watched over by, I don't actually think mom in this case, but I'm not 100% sure. I, can't, I haven't had a close enough look at her. But they've been having an absolute ball. Look at them. I think Brent is right. They are the delectable little monsters. They will forever be known as the delectable little monsters. Oh, what have we got? Yay, buffalo dung. Yummy, what a good way to start a morning. <laughs> it's my buffalo dung. Oh, well, we've each got a pile of buffalo dung. Oh, <laughs> put in place. It's amazing to watch these enormous cats with all of their power and strength being so completely gentle with the little ones of the pride. It's incredible to see. The third cub, just in case you're wondering, is off to the right of the other two and they're about to go, the little one's about to go stalk it. Here we go. Reunited once again. Uh, Already these three little monsters have wrecked at least one hunting attempt. Helen, you wanted to know why they have the cubs with them when they go hunting. And the answer is it's just the age that they're getting to. They have to learn at some point through observation. What they'll do is they will, at this point, most, most of the time, they will be accompanying the pride whenever they go out hunting. And you, what happens when they get a little bit older is they will learn to fall back and let the lionesses stalk forward but for now they're just a little bit young and they don't really understand exactly what's expected of them that looks like the male to me on the bottom just a very brief oh I've got your toe I've got your toe <laughs> oh smack on the bottom And Heather, on the subject of our little ones growing up, yes, the little cubs will feed off the kill at this point. Now, it's not like a wild dog society, or pack, where the babies come first. In the lion world, it's a rough and tumble and tough place, and they'll have to wait their turn before they get to nibble on any parts of the carcass, wait until the adults have eaten their full. bowled over by one of the lionesses. She's a new, she's a mother, but I'm not sure if she's their mother that was swatting them about like that. <laughs> Are you having fun there, Dave? Oh, yes. <laughs> How cool is this? Ha, got you. <laughs> Practicing. That looks like a boy to me, doesn't it? Couldn't quite see properly. I'll leave it up to you guys with all of your screenshots. I think we might have a male and two females. But see if you can't screenshot and we can come to a better conclusion. They're rather tricky to tell at this point. Oh, what's happening? What's happening? Huh? It's a very exciting morning. 
<laughs> yes, if only you knew how frustrated your mother's, your mother and aunts must be with you. Take down. Got you. Caught you. Caught you. I'm going to now exert the stranglehold. No, no, okay, you're getting up. Right, now we're going to take you down again. <laughs> it's amazing. That instinct is there, even if they're just practicing it on mom. <laughs> Get him! Oh, this is so cool. The other lionesses have moved off, and she's trying, I think they're moving on to go and hunt. I think Brent is with them now. But she's trying to keep the little ones back a bit from the whole proceeding. Probably with a great deal of frustration. Mommy, wait for me. <laughs> Galloping off after her. Right, now we really are spoiled, aren't we? We've got, <laughs> got a full-blown lion hunt happening here. <laughs> Just in... in Miniature version. Hello, little one. Aren't you big and brave hunting buffalo? Okay. I'm trying to see. Uh, they seem to... Well done. Brent and everybody else concerned. There is the pile of lions, the pride of lions, and just let me chat. Tired of feeding, tired of playing, has gone to go to sleep with mum. And all of the lions, I think, the exertions of the morning have taken their toll. And they are sleeping. Jeepers, that was a quick tire change. How impressive was that? Brent is up, running, and off. And one lioness is repositioning. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. I wouldn't call this vastly improved. I don't know how you feel, Dave. There's a cub. There's two cubs. <laughs> no, I definitely wouldn't say we have vastly improved your viewing experience. Oh! But Mum's just shuffled around, giving us the perfect view of Little Cub. Now, of course, as these cubs get slightly older, and as, or at least as the younger set get slightly older and join up with this group, it will start getting difficult. We know at the moment which mother is which. But it is going to start getting difficult. You're not going to be able to say that is definitely the mother, because lions aloe suckle. Hey girl, you're searching desperately for peace and shade. Thank you very much. Perfect. Mm. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. And in the gap there as well. That was hugely considerate of her. Now are the little ones going to come bumbling after mum or are they going to allow her a moment's peace? Shame. She looks thoroughly put upon. But what I was going to say is cubs aloe suckle. Oh, sorry, lions aloe suckle. In other words, they will feed cubs that are not their own. If they are lactating, they will suckle other lionesses' cubs. Having been unceremoniously displaced from mom, no more breakfast for you. I'm just going to have to enjoy the morning sun for a bit until it gets a little bit too hot. So cute. And welcome to Dora, who I think is one of our newest viewers. Dora, good morning and welcome to the Sunrise Safari. It's lovely to hear from you and please feel free to keep on sending through your questions. Dora says that she's surprised that the lions are not agitated by the presence of the safari vehicles. Are they used to people in cars? And the answer is yes, they are. So basically from, they are, from the time that they were the cubs, the size of the ones that we are looking at, these animals around here have grown up with safari vehicles moving around and about them. We are as much a part of their landscape, or at least their reality, as the other more natural aspects of it. She's also going to come move to the shade. 
step over the cubs ever so delicately. Sorry, Dora, I will finish explaining in a moment. You can see, look, she's walking right towards us, with absolutely not even a sideways glance in our direction. Head rub with her sister. She might... Oh, no, nope, she's going to flop there, right behind the vehicle. So, Dora, perfectly explained by our animals themselves. Um, if you needed any further proof, I think that she has just provided it for us. Lioness is completely happy with us in the vehicle. It is absolutely critical never to take that for granted, though. So we always try and treat our animals with utmost respect if we see that we are agitating them, if they're in a bad mood, if even if you know that animal like the back of your hand, if you see that they're unhappy, you leave them alone. And the same applies to elephants. Um, it, with cubs, for example, we restrict the number of vehicles that can actually come into the sighting. So we don't allow other vehicles in in a situation like this this situation for example we've got the cubs here in theory they're old enough um, and they're, they're alert enough for us to be able to have two vehicles here however the situation that they're in the place that we're in we won't put another vehicle in here it will just be us until somebody else would like to come and join it and that's because the amount of disturbance that they would have to cause to get in here um, and to create a position where both vehicles could see is just not appropriate. So we treat them with utmost respect and it's very important to remember that they are dangerous wild animals and you would be a fool to forget that. Okay, admittedly what you're looking at right now is not so dangerous. That's a cub. It's going to grow up to be dangerous but at the moment it is just a little ball of very sleepy fluff. It is important to remember that and that the barrier of human and lion interaction is there we do indeed, and unfortunately not the best view of the wonderful little cubs. I know Brent is contemplating how he's going to make his way out of the sighting. I'm quite trying to work out exactly how I'm going to manage it. Now, the reason I haven't repositioned is, first of all, I don't think we're going to get a better view, but second of all, our lioness that plonked herself down behind us is, um, first of all, she's very asleep, as you can see. She's looking thoroughly comfortable. <laughs> And because she's a new mom, there you can see the dark rings of the suckle marks on her belly. So this is probably the mother of the other set of cubs, the one near Buffelshook Dam. Oh, yes, get some sun there. So she probably hasn't had very much sleep. Yes, give that chest a good scratch. And she just looks so incredibly peaceful and contented. And um, so that's why we haven't repositioned, because... Look at where we are in comparison to her. She's come and plonked herself behind the vehicle. So we haven't been able to reposition. We shall settle with our view here for now. I really don't want to wake her up. I would feel absolutely terrible. Darby, we might have to sit here for... Yeah, we might be here all day. That's okay. There are worse things. Our line is... <laughs> The rest of the crew has offered to bring us snacks, so that is a relief. Um, I was worried about that. That was my biggest concern, actually. No, I'm not even joking. That was my biggest concern. Um, which means they're not very fast. Even a human being at this point could probably keep up with these lion cubs. Not that I'm going to test it, because their mother, on the other hand, is a totally different story. But they could. They, they, a human being could run as fast as the lion cubs can run now. They're just Their little legs are so short. And they're not quite as agile as Karula's lovely leopard cubs, which are able to disappear up into trees for safety. And they are going to be spending more and more time with the pride, which means it is a dangerous time for them. And we will have to watch their comings and goings with considerable trepidation, but at the same time considerable joy that we have got them. We're, we're convinced there is at least one male in this group. Whether or not is, there's more, I'm not 100% sure just yet. I think it's two males, uh, two females and a male. But we'll have to go back and compare screenshots because there was too much happening for us to properly look at the sex of the cubs at the same time. And then we'll have to wait for the other set to get big enough and start joining them. Almost panting, but that very fast breathing that baby, all babies, baby mammals have. Their metabolism working so fast to do all of that growing. And I promise you, 
Not that I would encourage it, but if you were to, for some reason, not watch our live safaris for the next six months and you happen to hop back on in six months' time, you would be shocked at how much these cubs will have grown. Lion, all mammals out here grow fast, but lion cubs do grow very, very quickly.